Hey guys, it's B. Welcome back. I'm here to show my September favourites. I don't have too much, but the things that I am going to show you, I'm really, really loving. So first of all, TV and like lifestyle stuff. Um, I've really been into, so I'm a bit puffed out because I just had to run to the door. Um, I've been really into cooking and baking, I think with the change of seasons. We've had apples on the tree and I've been wanting to use all those nice kind of fall ingredients. Lots of butternut squash and pumpkin -y things already. Um, really enjoyed Celebrity MasterChef this year. I thought the standard was amazing. And still really into British Bake Off. And I think this afternoon I'll bake. I tend to bake something on Tuesday because Bake Off's on. And then it means that we can have a cup of tea and something sweet while we're watching it as dessert. It's just fun to do it that way. Um, also really been enjoying this book that I got from Amazon a couple of weeks ago. It's Reese Witherspoon's book. Whiskey in a teacup, and it says it's what growing up in the South taught me about life, love, and baking biscuits. So it's kind of there's a few recipes, but there's her tips on how to celebrate different events. There's just really lovely pictures. It's just a really nice book. I think I know a lot of people that would enjoy this as like a Christmas gift. Uh, there are menus for different kinds of events, there are recipes for sort of cocktails and party food, and I'm just trying to find a really nice picture. It's just really, like the interiors pictures are really beautiful. So I've really been enjoying that, I really recommend it. Um, Discovery of Witches, I think if you know me quite well, you know by now that I loved that trilogy of books. Absolute schmaltz, not necessarily the most amazing writing, but just very engaging story. Kind of like Twilight for Grown Ups. Well, Sky One have just launched a drama um, and it's, it's I really enjoy it, it's absolute tosh. But I really love it. It's about a witch and a vampire who fall in love and that has a lot of um, effect on the world in general, on the magical world or whatever. And it's just a bit of fun. It's got loads of good actors in it and I really recommend that if you have Sky. Um, okay, so, oh, and also I'm back into Audible because I've been cooking and baking. I've been listening to podcasts and Radio 4. But what I really love about Audible is if you have a little bit of a lull in your reading, it really gets me back into reading and what I really love to do is have the audible book and the physical book. I'm not really a Kindle person and flip between the two because obviously you can listen to an audio book while you're driving, walking, cooking, doing other things. Whereas with reading, you really have to sit down and concentrate on it and I don't have that much time to do that. So really been enjoying audible at the minute. I'm listening to Fear by uh, Bob Woodward, who is one of the Watergate scandal journalists who blew that open and he's written a thing in, about the White House and that's very infuriating and interesting. And then I'm also listening to um, the great, the late great Joan Hickson. There are some marples that she has actually narrated and they're on Audible and I just love it. So that's what I've been enjoying. On to makeup. I've got um, two lip products and two Charlotte Tilbury products. So just like with clothes, like look at this lovely, honestly, I'm so into this pattern. This is a Madewell blouse and it's just got all these lovely fall colors in it, like the mustard and stuff. Um, so I just kind of, in summer and spring, I wear a lot of corally makeup, peachy tones, and I still love them. I think they flatter my face, but um, in winter or autumn, I kind of want those more berry tones, more burnished kind of plummy tones and stuff. And so, that's been reflected in these things. So what I'm wearing today is this pencil from Chanel and it's kind of a camel, quite brownie kind of color. This is the Rouge Crayon de Color in Natural, number 19. This isn't the same as those stylo things. They are lovely colors, but they're very loose, as in they're very messy and melty and just too much comes out. But this is like a pencil that twists up and I really want to get more colors of this. Just put a bit more on. Anyway, as I was saying, um, <clears throat> yeah, so I'm really loving that kind of colour. Where has it gone? Oh, there it is. It just rolled on the table. So I really like this. It's really small and handy to take out and it's really easy to put on because it's quite small at the end, so you can be quite controlled. It lasts ages, but it's like moisturising, so I really recommend these. Excuse me, I have a cough. <clears throat> then I did buy two of these. I did fall for the hype. This is the Generation G where you buy the lipstick and this. The other one I bought, which is like the natural kind of tinted balm, I, it's okay, but it's nothing exciting. It's no better or worse than the Dior tinted, the ones that like react to your lips. But this is worth the money because it's a nice, unique color. I'm trying to find out, because obviously you buy the case and then you buy the lipstick on its own and I can't see where it says the number of the color. Oh, here you are. 
06. So they don't have a, it doesn't have a name, it's just number six. So it is like a pinky color, but it's got enough of a kind of slightly plummy vibe that makes it feel very autumnal. I will swatch it there for you. It looks brighter on camera. It's not, it's a muted rose. And that's it with next to the Chanel one. So I've been wearing those two and I've even mixed them. I actually did round the edge of my mouth with this the other day and then blotted some of the pink in the center. And that did look nice. And then two new things from Charlotte Tilbury. I'm not sharing with you as a favorite the um, eye quad in the new Pillow Talk range. But I do like it, but I have to try and keep the favorites as the true favorites. And this I love even more. This is the Cheek to Cheek blush in Pillow Talk. I thought, because the lipstick is quite a new, nudie pink, but it's pink, that the eye palette and this would be really pink as well, and I thought they wouldn't suit me on my eyes and cheeks, but they're not. They are like a beautiful autumnal rose gold, and I just have probably used this nearly every day since I got it. That's the blush if you mix both colours together. So it's very rose gold, but what you can do is, is this whole swish pop thing where you use the one color and then just dot the brighter color on the center of the cheek. Honestly, you can use this as an eyeshadow. So if you are thinking, I can't really afford to get the eyeshadows and this, this is the standout product. So I would get this and you can use this on your eyes as well anyway and get quite a similar effect to the, um, to the eyeshadow quad. And then the other thing I'm really enjoying is the, her new Magic Away Liquid Concealer. I have got two, so not the lightest one. Her lightest shades in her concealers and makeups, even though I am quite fair, just come off too white and make me look a bit chalky. So this is her concealer that's got like the sponge top, a bit like that Maybelline one that we all love. It is quite good coverage and it kind of corrects and conceals in one. And I feel like it hasn't made me look cakey. I just have to make sure that I have used some sort of eye cream or eye gel underneath. And then I tend to blend it with the warmth of like my fingertips rather than a brush. And that way it doesn't kind of cake up. I just put a tiny bit of her airbrush powder to set that area. And as long as I don't apply too much, it doesn't look cakey, but it gives a really major coverage, like long lasting look, long lasting effect. And you don't really have to like apply it again later in the day. It's really good if you need a bit more coverage in that area, but without wanting to look 100 years old. <clears throat> and then accessories. Um, this is just, this is not expensive. This is by Morris & Co. And it is the Strawberry Thief pattern that I love. You'll see when I show you my favorite bag or my, my current bag, which I always just stick on any video I make, that I have a twilly in this pattern as well. It's the Strawberry Thief, it's the William Morris but this is velvet. Now this is technically a coin purse, but I use it as a small um, makeup y pouch, essentials pouch. I feel like the mini pochette even and some of my other makeup bags are too big unless I'm using like a tote. And I do favor the smaller bags quite a lot of the time. So I feel like, although this is a coin purse, I've been using it as a, a little essentials. And in the velvet, the pattern just looks so vintagey and just, I'm all about these patterns at the moment. Sorry, there's a window cleaner here, so the dogs go crazy. So you can fit in there, a lip balm, hanky. I have a little makeup. This is a Victoria Beckham little mini blusher. Vix nasal menthol thing, feminine product, hair thing, mini perfume, some ibuprofen, and I can fit, it's not here now, but I can fit the little Chanel mirror as well. Um, <clears throat> and I don't take like loads of stuff out with me. So this is plenty and it fits in, I can't think of a bag other than maybe the wok that I wouldn't put this in. This is from, I got this from John Lewis and it was about 12 pounds. I highly recommend it. It's really cute, very autumn. Another favorite, and I've used this every day since I got it, is this little kind of zippy coin purse from Mulberry. You know I have a love-hate um, relationship with Mulberry, but I think if you choose wisely and you know what to do when you examine something that you're about to purchase from them, they do still have lovely products. This is a really nice leather. Some of their new leathers I don't think are very good, but this is a very soft grade leather, and this is not in their traditional ox blood. This is called Burgundy. The reason I got this is I wanted a nice, another small wallet because the ones I've got get really heavy rotation in a rich autumnal color, and I didn't want, at one point I was gonna get the Chanel Caviar 
little O case zip one, but it's about 400 pounds and I just didn't really fancy spending that on that when I already have one of those. I know there are people that have like several of them in several colors, but I just sometimes feel I'd rather get something else than get another version of something I've already got. And this was 175. The zip is really smooth, guys. It's really good. I did try two or three in the store and this was the best one. Another one kind of caught on the corner. So you, again, you just have to see. It's got loads of room and it's lined in really buttery soft, kind of more lambskin in navy blue. And I just like the contrast. So I have got uh, three or four cards. There's three card slots. So I've got six cards. There's little slots down the back. There is a little coin thing, but it's just an open slip. It's not a zip thing. And I found that when I was putting coins in there, when I opened the zip, they were all sitting right on the top. So I have also got with me a coin purse and I'm just not gonna put coins in here. Um, really happy with my choice. It really goes with, it goes with the interior of my Chanel Classics. It goes great with Monogram. It goes, it just goes with everything and I really like it. I, to the point that I think I maybe would get another color to use in spring summer because I just don't really like burgundy in spring summer. Um, and then one last thing that I've been totally obsessed with, oh two, is this Jo Malone Blackberry and Bay shower oil. Oh, it's just so lovely. Um, when it gets wet, it goes white like a milk and it's one of those shower oils that then it rinses away and you don't have an oily, slippery bathtub. The smell, I'm just, I'm starting to get into Jo Malone. I don't really like the perfumes. I just don't, they don't last very well on me. But there are a few scents she does, particularly the more wintry ones like this Blackberry Bay and the Cassis and stuff that I really like in a candle or like a bath product. But this particular product has been really good. I have very dry legs and like elbows and I just want to be able to still wear skirts and dresses without tights for a while. So I'm still tanning my legs and I would need to moisturize and this really helps and I love the smell, it's very autumnal. And then my last favorite, but it's a major favorite, is this L&M um, fine jewelry piece. It's just a little rose gold chain with my initial B on it. What I love about this is that it, there's something there, but it's just totally like chilled and very low key. I can't feel it, it's so light. And honestly, I've just been sleeping in it, showering in it. And luckily, um, Jen sent me a extender because it's a little bit, it, it's 16 inch, so it just sat like right like a choker, which I hate on me. So she sent me a little rose gold extender so that it sits at a more comfortable length on me and I could not be happier with it. Um, so I think that's everything. Oh, one more thing. I'm really loving, a lot of people say they find it really difficult, but I'm really loving this whole transitional dressing thing. I'm not ready yet for big scarves, thick jumpers or coats. What I've been loving are like layering tops and just bringing in the autumn colors in that. So these two actually came in the post today, but they are the kind of thing I'm talking about. And they're just basics from H&M. They do such good basics. This is by Divided. It's just a deep forest green, like boxy long sleeve tee. And then this one is like a, it is a bit shiny, which I'm a bit like, Ehh. but it's just a lovely deep burgundy polar neck, which I am actually gonna wear under the short sleeved Madewell blouse to get that 70s vibe when it's a bit too cool to wear this with short sleeves. But my most worn top in the last few weeks has been this, which is from Hush. And it's a dark green sweatshirt with really lovely glittery uh, lettering on it that says love. I really love this. It's not too thick a sweatshirt, so it doesn't make me look bulky. It's long enough. Um, some of the styles on their website beware are a little bit um, short and boxy, but this one was just perfect. I just absolutely love it. And been wearing that loads because it's just the right like thickness for now. And finally, my bag of the week <coughs> is my pochette mati. Um, and it's got the little um, Love Lolo Twilly on the top because I just love the browns at the moment. Um, there are things that you know that I've got recently that if you follow me on Instagram that I haven't shown in these favourites because I'm still kind of bonding with them. I did recently get a Chanel reissue and I didn't come on here and do a video because well, there's lots of reasons for that. Um, I don't really do reveals and unboxings as videos. I tend to just share on my Instagram because then it's gone and I don't get flack for it from friends, family, and just the general trolls out there. Um, but I will, I just haven't really bonded with it yet. It's not a mistake, I love it, but I just haven't actually worked out how to style it and wear it yet. It hasn't become 
I don't, I like my things that I've had for a while. When I get new things, I'm often excited to get them, but it takes me a while to start using them regularly. I kind of leave them and just look at them for a while. So I have had a few new bags lately, two from Gucci, uh, one Mulberry and the reissue. And I will probably do a video like together, my new pieces or recently into my wardrobe first impressions or something. Um, that's probably how I'm gonna do it. But for now, these have been my favorites and I'll be back with some more favorites at the end of October. Take care guys.